Hey, what's up? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to React tutorial video. So, as you already probably know, some time ago React released its latest version, React 18, and I thought it's a great time to re record the React tutorial video. So, essentially, in this video, we're going to cover React from the very scratch using latest React version, React 18. Since it's a third iteration of this video, I added a bunch of useful stuff. For example, readme file with all the notes, bunch of new challenges to immediately test our knowledge, and of course, tons of useful resources where you can find more info on some specific topic. As a quick side note, this video is the first part of my React course, and since quite often I get this question, what's the difference between this video and the course? Let me just answer it here. First, course contains way more content. At the moment, it's somewhere around 60 hours. Specifically, it contains more tutorials for advanced libraries and more complex custom projects. Second, if there are any changes, let's say React comes out with minor update, I'm able to update the course content, which unfortunately is impossible to do with YouTube video. And third, I provide assistance. So if you get stuck on some topic or project during the course, I'll help you troubleshoot the issue. Lastly, if you enjoy the content and want to enroll in React or any of my other web dev courses, just navigate to johnsmilk.com. Again, the URL is johnsmilk.com. Pick the course you want to attend, sign up for a newsletter, and I'll provide a $10 coupon for any of my courses. All right, and welcome to the course. And we're going to kick things off by quickly covering what in the world is React. And there's no better place to start than official docs, which by the way, are located at this URL, reactjs.org. Again, the URL is www.reactjs.org. And once we navigate there, we're greeted by this one profound sentence. React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. That's it, my friends. Not a 10 page essay, just a short, concise, one sentence explanation. And while I'm a big fan of such straight to the point answers, let me elaborate a bit on that. So React was developed by Facebook and it's still maintained by Facebook. But as you know, now the company name is Meta. Its initial release was all the way back in 2013. And currently, it is by far the most popular JavaScript library to build user interfaces. As a side note, some of React competitors are Angular, Vue, and Svelte. Now, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this one. When it comes to React, it's all about components. And you can think of components as independent chunks of user interfaces. Components can be as small as one HTML element, let's say a button or a heading two, or you can be a rebel and jam your entire Facebook clone in one component. At the end of the day, a lot of it depends on your preference and approach. In reality though, you'll probably avoid the one component route since such approach somewhat defeats the entire purpose of using React in the first place. You see, the benefit of component is that you can build bunch of independent, isolated, and most importantly, reusable user interfaces that you can then piece it together just like the Lego blocks. And as a result, build even super big and complex apps without going insane. While your app can have as many components as you like, it will always have at least one called a root component. We already glossed over it a bit, but just to reiterate, the major benefits of using components and essentially React to develop your next app are following. You can 
build independent pieces of user interfaces, meaning changing logic or layout in one component will not break your whole app. And once the component is ready to go, you can reuse it all throughout your app. But the component code is still stored in one place. So if you ever need to make some changes, you don't have to run around like a headless chicken. Simply locate the component, apply the changes, and all of the instances will be automatically updated. And of course, let's not forget about the speed. You see, behind the scenes, React is using something called a virtual DOM, where only the component that needs to be updated is affected. And what's really cool, it's done without re-rendering the whole app, which in turn, of course, increases the speed of your final product. And as a result, the user experience as well. Before I let you go, I also want to show you a great example of React components in action. And I'm going to use our beloved Twitter. If we take a look at the sidebar, we can see list of links. And you'll notice this repeating pattern where each link has the icon as well as the text. So with React, what we can do, we can set up a component that is going to accept those two things, the icon and a text. And essentially, once we have the structure in place, every time we want to use that link, we simply need to provide the data. So the icon and the text. And what's really cool, if we want to change something about the structure, we only need to do that in one place. And then all of the instances where we use the link are going to be automatically updated. And if we keep looking, in reality, there's tons of repeating patterns, not just in Twitter, but pretty much in any app or site that you see. For example, this feed notice again, we have the photo, we have the name of the person who's posting, we have the Twitter handle, and I can go on and on and on. So notice, with every post, only the values are changing. So it's the same deal. We set up a structure, and then we just pass in the data. And if you're looking at it, you're like, well, okay, what's the big deal? Well, try doing that with HTML and CSS. You see, with just HTML, we don't have any kind of templating, correct? So effectively, we'll have to hard code all of this. But that's not the case with React. And if you're still not convinced, hopefully by the time I show you the first component, you'll see why React is so popular when it comes to building user interfaces. When it comes to course requirements, my expectation is that you're familiar with fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and most importantly, JavaScript. I'm going to honestly say that the more JavaScript you know, especially ES6, the easier it's going to be pick up React. Since at the end of the day, React is just JavaScript. So if you're familiar with basic tags, the general concept behind CSS selectors, array methods, and for example, a spread operator, you'll be in good shape. Now, it's not the end of the world if you're still getting comfortable with JavaScript. Just keep in mind that once in a while, you'll have to do some extra studying. Yes, of course. I'll try to cover even the straight up vanilla JS features in as much detail as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, it's a React course. So if you still need more info, please be prepared to utilize external resources. And one such resource is my YouTube channel, Coding Addict. More specifically, JavaScript Nuggets playlist. So before each video, where we will utilize some vanilla JS feature, I'll share a link to a corresponding video where I cover that feature in vanilla JS environment. And hopefully that way you can simply watch the video, get up to speed 
with what the specific feature is doing and continue with the course videos.